Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Aura News broadcast. I'm Daniel Cook, your host for our daily English news edition, weekdays at 6 p.m. The Association for, of Foreign Investors has raised serious concerns about the frequent and unreasonable audits by the tax administration. A 2015 report entitled The Environment of Doing Business in Albania notes that only half of the audits have had reasonable legal basis. The association is concerned about the impact of bribes and political connections on the penalties that are being imposed on businesses. According to the report, only one in three businesses believe that tax audits are accurate and based upon the law. According to some, these checks and fines are only intended to collect more tax revenue. The report notes that some aspects that are negatively affecting the climate for doing business in Albania are connected to the functioning of the courts, frequent changes of tax rates, and high levels of informality. It also indicates that corruption is very prevalent. Among other things, the foreign investors say that the economic laws that are in power often leave room for interpretation. On Wednesday, the Association of Foreign Investors in Albania will have meetings with senior officials of the government to convey all these concerns and to discuss the expectations of the coming fiscal package. The Democratic Party has made a thorough analysis of the justice system in Albania and attached it to the draft of the justice reform, which was sent to the Venice Commission. In a 55-page document, the Democrats analyzed the reorganization of the system, expressing their concern about the efforts of the government to take control of it. The Democratic Party opposes the article on the selection of the chief prosecutor, emphasizing that the criteria that has been set leads to political control of the prosecution. They also oppose the formula for the establishment and function of the Supreme Court, claiming that appointing individuals who come from outside the justice system creates the opportunity for the court to be politicized. In addition, they do not agree with Article 12 of the draft, which stipulates that the Constitutional Court cannot reject a law passed by the Assembly. They are against restructuring the High Council of Justice and the establishment of a Supreme Judicial Inspectorate. According to them, a Supreme Inspectorate could not avoid political influence, and because of this, they make the following suggestion. In order to increase the independence and autonomy of the self-regulatory justice system, there should be only one inspector for the judiciary from within the High Council of Justice. The HCJ inspectorate should be arranged in separate sections that are responsible for discipline and evaluation of judges to ensure the necessary separation of these functions. The Democrats support the establishment of a special anti-corruption unit, but they want it to be immune to political influence. The Democrat experts also support the creation of a council of the prosecution, but again, they are concerned about the interference of politics, so they request that the members be appointed by the Assembly. The election would have to be by a qualified majority that guarantees the participation of the opposition. Prime Minister Rama's desire to restrict the number of terms for Albania's mayors will soon be passed into law. Under the new local government law, mayors will not be able to hold office for more than two mandates in a row. The draft will soon be under discussion by the Assembly and will abolish the payment for municipal advisors and reimbursement of their expenses for attending meetings. The draft also includes tax exemption for certain categories of needy people in accordance with the current law. The changes are in line with the provisions of the European Charter of Local Government but will bring innovations in the municipality tax collection. Article 35 of the draft stipulates that municipalities can generate revenue from local taxes of personal income in the form of gifts, inheritance, or local lottery. The new law is needed by the local government units because of the administrative territorial division. It is expected to enter into force on January 1st of next year. Today, the Parliamentary Health Commission discussed the new bill on pharmaceutical services, which would allow the importation of medicines from the Balkan countries. The change proposed by the government would remove the restrictions on importing Balkan medicines, when current law mandates that any medicines that enter Albania must have been traded in at least one EU country. These changes to the bill were adopted yesterday, but not without some debate. 
The opposition strongly objected to the change, warning about the risk of trading medicines without standards of quality and safety. They proposed the establishment of a special committee of international and Albanian experts to examine the quality of the medicines entering the country. The majority rejected this proposal, causing argument among the committee members, and the Democrats accused them of only making changes that benefit their own clients. Albania has the best possible relations with the U.S., says Prime Minister Rama, just days after returning from a visit to the United States. The Prime Minister spoke today at a meeting with the Albanian American Fund on the 20th anniversary of its presence in Albania. He said, The advancement of democracy in our country and the solution of the Albanian issue in Kosovo are mostly due to the help of the USA. We all have the obligation to build up the coexistence that make equal rights possible for everyone. The Albanian American Fund shows that ideas are valuable when they can be realized. It shows that ideas in Albania can be, really, can be realized and courageous investments can be made with transparency and success, Mr. Rama declared. The Albanian American Fund marked a new chapter of investment in Albania and the Prime Minister considers it to be a great success. He continued, more than 7,000 jobs have been created and the fund has contributed 2 billion lek to the gross domestic product, directly or indirectly. The investments of the fund have directly attracted foreign investments, with a total of 300 million lek. Mr. Rama praised the president of the fund, Michael Granoff, for his contribution to Albania and presented him with the Medal of Gratitude. The Democratic chairman, Lu Zimbasha, has begun a tour of meetings to bring attention to the civil discontent in the government and to present the solutions that the Democratic Party has to offer. He began his tour in Lushnia today, meeting with the citizens and traders to discuss their daily problems. The opposition leader accused Prime Minister Edi Rama and the Assembly Speaker, Ilir Mehta, of plunging the country into poverty and corruption. He promised that he will be by the side of the people and that he will not accept any political agreements at their expense. He had this to say to the crowd. They think that everything can be bought and sold, but they are creating illusions for themselves. The Democratic Party is not for sale. We will never make any agreement with Edi Rama and Ilir Mehta. Luzim Basha has an alliance with the citizens. The path we have to go through is difficult, but not impossible. He went on to say that his tour will not stop until his goal is accomplished. We will revolt until this government is overthrown, he said. We will fight for an inclusive democracy, not a democracy that is just for show, Mr. Basha said. According to him, the Democratic Party has prepared a plan to recover the economy, and they will present this plan to every citizen throughout the country. During a report at the Commission of Productive Activity, the Energy Minister Damian Jignuri stated that the agreement with CHES was reached at the request of the internationals, the World Bank, the IMF, and the EU. Minister Jignuri said that solving the disagreement with the CHES company was set as an obligation in order to boost investments. According to him, the accusations by the opposition are merely intended to discredit the reforms in the energy sector. The Democratic MP Gens Ruli argued the opposite declaring that, the, that a Czech veto of Albania's candidate status should not have been a condition, or could not have been a condition, when the Czech embassy denies such a thing. He raised objection to the statement of the director of the Energy Committee, Mr. Kopatz, who claimed that the government's agreement with Ches was connected to the candidate status. That concludes our news for this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Please tune, again, tune in again tomorrow at the same time for more translated news in English. Thanks, and have a great night.